You know what's really crazy? Yes.
Okay, oh, David, let's do a pre prelude. Okay,
Okay. <laughs> I'm Linda Larson, and I'm subbing today. Pastor John is on vacation. Pastor Lori is, this is her Sunday at Celebration Lutheran in um, Anacortes. And um, Barb is also gone. And Peter is sleep deprived because he has, he has been directing a great um, concert band the last two nights. And if you missed one of those performances, he's doing it again this afternoon at Arlington High School. So feel free to join that. It was an excellent, excellent program. So, um, welcome everyone, especially those who are visiting today, and it is our practice um, these days to take the prayer requests prior to the service, so I have this scribe over here who will write for me, and are there any prayer concerns that you would like to add to the prayers when we get to that point? Ruth Ann. Merle, Merle's having a surgery for a kidney mass. Peter. Okay. Gregory's aunt Carla. Very sick. Anyone else? Your brother Bruce. Okay. Anna Lori's brother Bruce. Anyone else? Then we also have space for Thanksgivings. So is there, are there any thanksgivings you would like to include in today's prayers? Yes. The Geary's have a new great-grandson. What's his name? Waylon, as in Jennings. <laughs> oh, great-grandpa. Oh, Randy would have been a nice name. Yes, yes. So, the Geary's great grandson, new grand, great grandson. Yes. Okay. And you're visiting from where? Okay. So, the guests of the Nelsons. Oh. Oh, I heard that story. I heard that story. Yes, no relation. Right. Okay. Yes, Marin. Okay, girl or boy? Okay, so Marion has a new great, great granddaughter, Eleanor. Okay. All right. Okay. Your mic is not on. What? Your mic is not on. That's her fault. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here we go. His eyes are not dimmed, but... <laughs> yes, yes. The fields do look great. So Thanksgiving for the spring weather and farming. So, so this has felt a little bit like an um, improv. But <laughs> so as we prepare for worship, I invite you to just <clears throat> take a deep breath and listen to the prelude that Peter and David will offer us.
Please stand. <clears throat> we begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow in the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We confess, confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We, we are truly sorry and humbly repent. In, in your compassion, compassion forgive us our sins, sins known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Notice that we're singing verse 1, 2, and 4 of the opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We can go back over there.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world, for he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. The first reading is from Acts chapter 7, verses 55 through 60. First, an introduction. Stephen was one of the seven men chosen by the apostles to serve tables so that the apostles could be free to serve the word. And this is from Acts 6, verses 1 through 6. Stephen does more than distribute food, however. For as preaching of God's word, he becomes the first martyr of the faith. The reading begins. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. 
Our psalm today is selected verses from Psalm 31, and we will read it responsibly with the women reading the light print and the men the bold print. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Again, an introduction. Christ is the cornerstone of God's saving work and the foundation of our lives. We are God's chosen holy people who continuously celebrate and declare the mercy of God we experience through Jesus Christ. The reading begins. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may <coughs> proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. The introduction. On the night that he is to be arrested, Jesus shares final words with his disciples. As one through whom God is known, he promises to go before them and act on their behalf. Beginning with verse 1. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the place to, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, 
and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, do, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am the Father and the Father is in me. And if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. I invite the children to come forward. How is everyone today? Good. I'm seeing some thumbs, mostly up, some downs. Okay. Some. Mm. Okay. Do any of you, um, I, well, I hope that none of you have your own phones yet, but do any of you, you do have your own phone. Okay. Do any of you know what the GPS function on a phone does? Yes. Sure, it tells you where you are, and if you put in a place that you want to go, it tells you how to get there, right? And some people have that in their cars. Do any of you have it in your car, a GPS, a little map there that tells you things? Okay. So have is the, a grown-up in your life ever turned, made a turn that's different than the GPS tells them to? Yes. What happens? What happens if the GPS tells you to turn right and the grown-up turns left? Yeah, what happens? It fixes itself, doesn't it? And it shows you another way around. And mine sometimes says, take a U-turn at the next choice you have. You know, like, go back to where you were and then follow the directions, okay? It doesn't yell at you. It doesn't say, hey, I said to turn right, you turn left. It doesn't do that, but it does find another way, doesn't it? When Jesus says, I am the way, do you think that that means that every one of us will walk the same path? No. Do you think that every one of us will go a straight line to wherever it is we're going? No. Do you think that any of us will ever make a wrong turn? Yes. Do you think that if we make the wrong turn, we'll be lost forever? No. Very good. So Jesus... It's a lot like a GPS and giving us lots and lots of chances. And you know, there's lots and lots of different ways to get from here to there. There's not just one way. There's lots of ways. And Jesus will be with you every step of that way. Okay? Thank you. You can go back to your seats. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, creator, redeemer, and ever-present spirit. Amen. Several years ago, in this week in the liturgical year, my bishop at the time posed a question to all of us based on the first reading from the book of Acts. That familiar story of the stony, stoning of Stephen the martyr. The question was, how many coats does it take? How many coats does it take? I thought of that question a lot in preparing for this sermon. How many coats did it take that day in the first century to bring about the death of Stephen? One person throwing stones at him might have caused a minor injury, but it would hardly have been enough to kill him. The stones of two or three or four people would have caused more injury, but Stephen might have been able 
to escape. How many coats needed to pile up in order to result in his death? I can think of so many parallels, situations in which repetition can produce both a positive or a negative result. How many coats does it take? Experts say that it takes 40 to 50 repetitions to break a habit or to form a new habit. So whether we're trying to quit something or add something to our daily routine, it takes about a month and a half of daily consistency to accomplish that goal. I'm old enough to remember cars without seat belts. Our family would drive thousands of miles in the summer to visit our grandparents. All four of us kids laid out in the back of a 59 Chevy station wagon, barreling through the night, because we couldn't afford a motel, at speed limits in those days, 70, 80, even 90 at times. How many people needed to die or be injured before seat belts became mandatory? One family dealing with the death of a loved one due to drunk driving would never have led to changes in laws about drinking and driving. How many death, how much death and grief were needed to form Mothers Against Drunk Driving and to change our DUI laws? How many times does misinformation or lies, small ones or big ones, need to be repeated before people will begin to believe it to be true? How many times does it take far out conspiracies to become accepted? How many mass shootings does it take for our country to do something constructive about guns? Obviously the answer is not 40 or 50. It's not even almost two per day which is the rate of mass shootings during 2021, 22, and 23 so far. After I finished this sermon yesterday, I saw the news last night, and there had been yet another in the mall in Texas. Mass shootings are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to gun-related deaths. As of May 1st, at least 14,000 people have died from gun violence in this country this year. That's an average of 115 a day. The same questions, kind of questions can be asked about a lot of things. How many scientific studies does it take to convince us that access to food and health and housing and education and the ballot box makes for a healthier democracy? How many studies about climate change need to be done before we change our habits? And how many times do we have to be reminded that God has called us to be good and wise stewards of the resources we have been given? How many wars do we have to fight before we realize that violence and power create more problems than they attempt to solve? How much does it take? These aren't new questions. Bob Dylan, in his song, Blowing in the Wind, asked the same questions. And by the way, that song was released 60 years ago this month. We are still asking the same questions in those lyrics. How many coats does it take? In our gospel lesson today, we find Jesus talking his, to his disciples on the night of Passover after washing the disciples' feet and instituting the Lord's Supper. You can sense a bit of frustration in his words, as if he's saying, how many times do I have to tell you this stuff? Indeed, how many coats does it take? How many times do we need to be told that we are loved, both by God and by others, before we believe it? How many times does Jesus need to explain the relationship between himself and God 
to his disciples and to us. How many times do we hear the familiar words of Jesus in our gospel lesson? In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, you will be also. How many times do we have to hear those words and then we still wonder if God's presence and promise can be trusted? How many times can we hear that we are indeed God's own people, saved by God's mercy, before it begins to be the driving force in our life? How many coats does it take? The Holy Spirit continues to call and invite us in the same way to the life, or to, in the same way of life that Jesus lived. Jesus said, follow me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus showed us that his way was one of caring and compassion for others. How many times do we need to hear that message before we will believe and follow? The words of invitation, follow me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Words of grace have so often become words of law and exclusion. Rather than dividing us into groups based on right or wrong, insiders or outsiders, these words were intended to widen the circle of God's mercy and grace. God, Jesus wants us all to live the way he lived because he knew that would be the way to truth and life for the world. There is not just one lifestyle that follows Jesus' invitation to experience the love and truth and life that God brought into the world through him. There are many ways that God calls us individually and as communities of faith, to live out God's commands and promises. There are many ways to live a Christian vocation in this world. There are many ways to experience a loving relationship with our fellow human beings. There are many ways to do church in, way, in a way that extends God's love into our world and gives glory to God. There are many ways to advocate for health and justice and peace in our world. There are many ways in which we experience God's love, God's truth, and, God's, and the new life that God wants for all of us. This is a message of grace and inclusion, a message of comfort and hope, a word that we can depend on for all of life's journey, even when we despair and wonder, how much does it take? A lot of people work very long and hard so that we can have safer vehicles, clean drinking water, voting privileges, public education, libraries, access to the ballot box, and all sorts of things that make our lives better. We are grateful for those efforts. Rather than despairing about what it would take to see the changes that we want, the witness of those who have come before us might encourage us to continue to work on those issues that still need to be changed. After all, it is truly a gift of grace that even though God may lament, how much does it take? God hasn't given up on us. Let us be grateful for that gift as we hear again God's call to follow in the way of truth and life and receive strength for our journey this day. Amen. Please stand for the hymn of the day and note what verses were being sung. We're not singing all eight.
Let us confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of life, strengthen your church to proclaim your gospel even in times of trouble. Give us the courage of Stephen and other martyrs who have modeled steadfastness and peace in working for justice. Thank you for not giving up on us and give us the will to work for the change. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, you show your steadfast love through mighty waters, towering mountains, verdant fields, and arid deserts. Protect the Earth's diverse habitats from the forces of pollution, erosion, extinction, greed, and global warming. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, your spirit guides us in all truth. Give wisdom to world and local leaders and organizations as they begin, build, or renew relationships. Strengthen leaders and aid organizations in areas needing to be rebuilt following conflict, unrest, or natural disaster. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty, and all who question if there is a home in your heart. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Assuring God, you accompany your people amid uncertainty and change. Comfort and strengthen those who are going through transitions of any kind. Lead us in your way. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, comfort the afflicted, console all who grieve, and grant hope to all. Receive also those concerns we now name before you. For those facing surgery, Merle, Bruce, Gregory's aunt. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we thank you for your goodness to us and to all that you have made. We praise you for your creation, for keeping us in all things in your care, and for all the blessings in life. Receive our thanksgiving for these blessings we now name before you. For, birth, for the birth of great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren. For families who have opportunity to be together and for beautiful weather 
an opportunity that we have to farm this beautiful land. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Share God's peace with those around you. Peace with us. Peace. Our worship continues with the morning offering. Let us pray. God of of mercy mercy and grace, grace, the eyes eyes of all wait wait upon you, and you open your hands in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right right to give God God thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ. 
who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, blessed it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to them to drink. And he said, Drink of this, all of you. This, is my, this cup is my... Shoot. <laughs> This is my, this cup is my new covenant in take and drink, all of you, and remember me. Amen. <sighs> Let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Please be seated. When you arrived today, you got either an empty plastic cup or a set of communion elements that's prepackaged. Those of you who choose to come forward, you may stand or sit at the altar rail and bring that plastic cup with you. We have some extras up here in case you don't have one or you forget it in your pew. And um, those of you who are communing in your seats, we will do that after everyone else has communed up here. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All are welcome.
true take and Are unable to join us in worship to come forward for ascending from us. And you all have a part of that, it's printed in your bulletin. So come forward. Gracious God, loving you all your family with a mother's tender care. As you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who cannot join us. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your providing presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you to all of those of you who took something out of the fellowship hall in the hallway. Um, I wasn't here last weekend, so I haven't, haven't seen it till this morning, and I was very, very pleased that most of those tables were empty. And I was so excited that I filled them up again. <laughs> we found five box. well, we knew they were there, but there were five boxes of books uh, back in a room that had been cleaned out quite a while ago, and we have put those out this morning. And amongst those, there is a book... There is a box full of these Bibles, and inside the front cover, some of them have um, declared to the glory of God in honor of or in memory of somebody. We have set, Katie Olson and I went through them all this morning, and set all the ones aside that have a family's personal name in them. Um, and they're in one pile, and then all the others were either given by the Sunday school or by the church. Those are in the box. So if you, uh, if you decide you would like to have one of these, please look inside first. And if it's given in memory of somebody else and it doesn't mean anything to you, leave that and take another one because they're all the same. Um, but if you think you might have a family member who has given one in memory, please go and check those out. And again, thank you for taking what you did and go take some more. <laughs> As you can tell by the uh, bulletin, we are in need of cookies because it takes at least 30 dozen a month for Friendship House to uh, make the cookie bags that we do. And I've been, I occasionally make cookies, but I have found that the one for you, one for me policy isn't a good idea for me. <laughs> So what I did this month is I went and bought pre-made cookie dough, which is good, and um, I would like to give it, and I have a couple of them, I would like to give it to somebody who would be willing to bake them, and if that's something you're willing to do, I'd be more than happy to buy the containers of cookie dough. It's so... Come see me after church. I would love to have you do that. And we also have containers. These are uh, uh, freezer containers, so you can bring back one dozen cookies, two dozen cookies, or three dozen cookies. And if or, you put, <laughs> or more, or more if you don't need the dough. But you can put your name on the bottom, and then after we use them every month, we put them on the counter in the kitchen. You can pick up the container and bring it, bring back some more. So. Thank you. We're giving these away as well. Go again. Okay. Hi, 
Um, my name is Casey, and I'm a Sunday school student. I'll be telling all of you what is happening this month of May. So our Sunday school is putting on a food drive. If you would like to bring something, please, please bring all non-perishable food, cleaning supplies, and baby products. Put them on the back table in the hall. All of those items will be used to restock our ELC sharing shelf, and extras will be going to the Helping Hands Food Bank. Thank you. I know this is getting long, but um, this crew over here was up at Lutherwood yesterday uh, doing some uh, landscaping, pulling down shrubs, uh, you know, washing and weeding and doing things. And uh, I wanted to mention that the Lutherwood uh, administration was exceedingly grateful for what this church has done and the drive to help raise money for Lutherwood. So thank you all for that. I want to first say that. So. Is great. We it was somewhere over six thousand dollars, which was then matched, and they received other funds. But we were sort of the highlight. They wanted to make sure that we all knew that that um, they were grateful. Secondly, um, there's another opportunity to go up and hack away at weeds and pull out roots. And we're actually going to work at the area behind the dining hall next weekend, starting at 9 a.m. at Lutherwood till about three. There's a lunch provided of sandwiches and things. And we're going to try and get an area um, between the dining hall and the creek um, cleared out for picnic tables. And I've talked to some folks about um, providing some soil and things. We may need a truck at some point, maybe not next week, but a truck to haul soil with. We'll see. And then um, I'm going to uh, work with Peter, and we're going to try and rebuild the deck on the back of the dining hall that's just, I mean, there's, it's taped off like there's a, a, a dead body scene or something up there, and, <laughs> and I'd really like some help from, so if you have any desire to work on a deck, we're not sure what it'll be made of, if it will just do treks or something, but we're going to try and construct about a 35, 35 by 12 foot deck that's just a big rectangle off the back of the dining hall, and that'll be a separate date, but you can all come up and join us to look at what's what needs to be done before the campers start in June, like June 20th or June 18th, whatever that weekend week is. But but we have a little bit to do before they show up. So so if you have any questions, please contact. The work party is at 9 a.m. Saturday. Saturday, and you can come anytime. But 9 a.m. Saturday, and then we'll probably construct another group for construction after that, where we get all of our supplies together and just pound it out in one day. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sorry. My battery's dead or the device's battery is dead. Probably both. <laughs> uh, just wanted to call your attention to the announcement on the announcement page about the blood drive that will be here this Tuesday and Wednesday. There's a critical need for blood as always and you can call that number and get an appointment. Also, if you have extra mugs at home, bring them and put them also on the back table. I think that you can read the rest of them. Uh, is there anybody else who wants to talk? Okay, please stand. <laughs> Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing the extending hymn.
Go in peace. Serve the risen Lord. Thank you.